Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech, and the other day, Apple released macOS 15 Sequoia Beta 1. macOS 15, or macOS Sequoia as it's called, is available to developers right now in Beta 1 and will be available to public beta testers in July. It typically releases to the public, usually around September or October. And this update was released alongside many other updates with iOS 18, iPadOS 18, and all of the other devices that get updates in beta form right now. This came in at 6.44 gigabytes on my M2 15-inch MacBook Air and took a little while to install, and there are some supported devices to go over as Apple has changed it a little bit. So they now support iMac 2019 and later, iMac Pro 2017 and later, Mac Studio 2022 and later, MacBook Air 2020 and later, Mac Mini 2018 and later, MacBook Pro 2018 and later, and Mac Pro 2019 and later. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to the Apple in the upper left, go to About This Mac, and as you can see, it says Mac OS 15 and beta, the current build number is 24A5264N. So this particular build is very early on, and we should expect probably six to eight betas. Now, as far as the first new features, well, one thing Apple made a big deal of in their Apple Keynote is Apple Intelligence. If we go to Apple's website here, give it just a moment to load, you'll see Apple talked about this quite a bit. Apple Intelligence is coming later on to all M1 and later powered MacBooks and Macs. It allows for different on-device technology and different assistance. You can see here it will be available to iPhone, iPad, Mac to help you write express yourself and get things done easily. So you can read all about this here and I may make a separate video about it as well. But this is coming to things such as mail and other features that just aren't available yet. It's coming to beta testers in the summer and will be out as a beta in the fall. Now the first feature we can sort of see, which is a big deal, is iPhone mirroring. Now this feature is not working yet, unfortunately, and in order to actually see this, you have to search for it in the Finder. It's supposed to show up here on its own and allow you to connect using mirroring to your iPhone. So if you go to Finder, and within Finder, if we search for iPhone mirroring, that's where I was able to find it and then drag it to my dock. Unfortunately, at this time, again, like I said, it's just not working. But what it will allow you to do is actually connect wirelessly to your iPhone, have the full iPhone on the screen here, and allow you to use that. Again, you can see that on Apple.com, where hopefully they actually show this in Beta 2 or allow us to use it in Beta 2. If we go to the Sequoia Preview, give it just a second to load. As we scroll down, you'll see it's called Continuity. Use your iPhone from your Mac. You'll also get iPhone notifications on Mac. This is something that's coming later this year and allows you to drag and drop between devices as well. So this is something I can't wait to try, but unfortunately it's not available just yet. Another thing we get is the option to tile different things. So if I want to tile this window, drag it to the side, you'll see it highlights the side there, and then I can drag it in. The same is true with preview. I can do that here or bring it to the top or bottom. We also can see the options for this by holding option and then dragging and moving around. I press and hold, you can see that as we move back and forth with all the different tiling options. So if I want it to auto size and tile, it will now do that. You may have already noticed we do have a new Sequoia wallpaper and it's animated when you lock the screen. But if we go into our wallpaper, you can see it here where it says Mac OS beta. And then we can switch it from light mode that we have here to dark mode. So depending on what you're using, it will automatically switch and you can show it as a screensaver. We also have a Macintosh option here. So if we go in, we have light and then dark mode. Give it a second here, and you'll see it start to sort of tile on the screen. So a couple different changes here, nothing huge, but you can see all of the different ones here. And Apple continues to update these with what we have on Apple TV with tvOS 18. So again, back to Mac OS beta. If I press the lock button, you'll see it starts to animate press it again and it stops. So it looks really nice and I'm really glad to see some new wallpaper. Hopefully we'll see more in the future. Also within settings, they've redone this a little bit with privacy and security. So they've given us some more options with contacts where we can sort of specify what we want to allow to use different contacts. And this will be updated in the future with more information. But the privacy in general, 
is updated and the menu is basically matching what we have on iOS. So you'll see it now says Apple account instead of Apple ID. So just some minor changes here. Again, under general, everything basically looks the same, but we do have some different icons here and there. If we go into FaceTime, there's an update as well when you're making video calls. And when you're in a video call, we'll now have universal options in the upper right here that allow us to change the background. Just like we can blur it, we now have the option to change the background to different options. So we can select from different ones we have here, whether it's a mountain in the background or we can change from just different colors and it works just seamlessly. Press on it, of course, it looks like there's only one right now, or you can select from your own photos if you'd like to do that. Again, if we go back up here and then we go to portrait, we can turn that off and then we'll get a better look at what the background looks like. So that's something they've just added that makes FaceTime or video calls a little bit better. There's also a new presenter mode. So maybe we're actually presenting. We'll now have the option to see a presentation before we share that with someone else. So if we connect to FaceTime, now I'm connected with a FaceTime call and we have a new option if we share our screen. So if we share my screen, we now have a presenter overlay that makes sure that we're only sharing what we want our audience or people that we're connected to to see. So we can make it small, make it large, or share the entire screen. So this is great if we don't wanna share everything. So maybe if we open up Safari, it will say share this window or share all Safari windows. It's very dependent on what we actually select now instead of just defaulting to everything. Let's go back into Safari and Safari is now faster than ever. You may have already noticed the privacy report looks a little bit different. And maybe if we go to apple.com, then we'll open up another window, maybe go to Mac rumors. And maybe if we go into this story here where there's vision pro demos at Apple stores in the UK, we have an all new option in the upper left next to our address bar. We have highlights. It says Safari intelligently displays summaries, previews, and suggestions from the web, near lo nearby locations, and more. We can turn this on. You'll see it says Vision Pro demos at Apple Store in UK, Canada, and. So it's sort of a summary. We have text size options. So if we want to make it bigger or smaller, of course, just like we did before, but we now have a new reader that's been redesigned. It's a little bit cleaner and just easier to read overall. Safari is also now aware of video. So if we have a video on the page, let's see if we can find one here. If we watch the keynote, give it a second here, I'll just pause it. And once video is detected, Safari is now aware of that and will make the viewer bring the video content front and center. So that's something a little bit new. And then we can of course switch between our tabs, close it, whatever we'd like. So it's just a little bit different in that it recognizes video overall. Let's go ahead and close out of Safari. And if we close out of Safari and then go into our launch pad, we'll scroll over and you'll see we have a new passwords app. This carries across to iOS, iPadOS, and Mac, and of course, anything else you're using. So if we log in here, you'll see it says, welcome to passwords. And then it says easily save and fill passwords with autofill, secure encryption, and seamless syncing. So it syncs across everything and we can import if we want to and then turn on notifications. So you'll see this is brand new, has my passwords, has your pass keys and much more. This is super helpful and I'm really glad they brought it to a separate app instead of somewhere within setting. Within messages, we get the same sort of benefits we do with iOS 18. Within messages itself, if we press the button here, we have the option to send later if we want to schedule a message. So if I want to say this is a test message, and then we can select the time we want it to send. Many people have been wanting this for some time. We'll just select that. And once we send it, it's now scheduled. You can see the schedule here and one from my example earlier with iOS 18. So it's great that we have that option now. We also have the option, if we scroll down, it doesn't show by default. It actually is based on day. If we scroll down and maybe we want to type, this is a new message in Mac OS. 15. Maybe we want to highlight Mac OS 15. If we right click or option click, we now have text effects and you'll see we have big, small, shake, nod, explode, ripple, bloom, and jitter. If we select bloom, you'll see what it looks like there. We go to text effects. Of course, we can change all of the text as well with bold, italicize, underline it and strike through it. Or we could have it shake and once it's sent, it will shake just like that. So some nice updates there. We also have the option to tap back and you'll see the tap back menu looks a little different. 
and we can add any emoji we want this time around. Before we couldn't do that, now we can select whatever emoji we would like to respond with a tap back. Another thing worth mentioning is RCS messaging does not seem to be enabled just yet. So if you've been wanting to use that, that will probably come in later betas. Maps gets an update across every system and you'll see it says introducing hikes and custom routes. Choose from thousands of curated national park hikes or create your own routes when you request walking directions. So if we go to continue, I've looked for Yellowstone National Park. We'll click on it, and if we scroll down, we have some updates where we have popular hikes. So if we want to go to this one here, click on it, it will show the hike, where it is, and the different elevations. We can add it to the library to save for later, or we can even create our own hikes based on where we live. So if you wanted to do that, you now have the option. So it's great that we have this built in. It works across the Mac, iOS, iPadOS, and Apple Watch. Apple is also adding topographic maps. So if we go into 3D, I haven't seen this just yet, but we can change the 3D, of course, and topographical maps, maybe they haven't added them just yet. But you'll see that we have driving, satellite, transit, and explore. So hopefully that will be in a later update. If you've seen this somewhere, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Notes gets an update on Mac. And within Notes, if we type this is a new note, then here is another note and another sample note. One thing we can do is maybe highlight a specific area of text. Maybe we want to change the way this looks, click on the little text icon here, and then just simply highlight it. We can select from the color that we want, purple, pink, orange, mint, or blue, and then it will highlight the text, just like on iOS. Another thing we can do is we can make headers sort of make the content underneath them disappear. Again, click the text option, go to heading, and if you have a lot of text here, you can see you can collapse it. So you have a little arrow here that allows you to do that. We also have the option for voice memos with transcription. So we have this option here, click on it, and you'll see we have the option for a new recording with a little transcription icon. Click on it, and let's see if it works. We'll make sure it's selected. This is a new voice transcription or voice memo. And what I've found actually is the first time you try it, it doesn't work. So let's go ahead and close that. We'll delete it. Let's stop it here. We'll delete it and then we'll try again. Or we'll just add another one. So let's get rid of that, add another one, and see if it will work this time. Typically on the second try it's working for me, but this definitely seems to be pretty buggy. So maybe it's not working right now, but it is working on iPhone. Some people say it works or it doesn't. But again, this is an early beta, so keep that in mind. It will probably work later on. Finally, one of the best things in notes is math notes. We can just type something such as two plus four, and then the equal sign, and it will automatically calculate that. You can do this with graphs or two over four equals, and it gives you the information. Again, we can do 425 divided by seven times 42, and then again equals, it will solve it for you. This works for just about anything, and again, it works with graphing and much more. It works best on iPad because you can just draw this out, but it will carry over to this and any notes on iOS, iPad, or Mac. If we close out of notes, you'll see we have weather and weather looks pretty much the same. But within the weather app, if we have a different feels like temperature that's far apart from what it actually is, it will display that side by side. We also have the option to add our different work and home locations directly within weather as well. So that's something we can add. I've already added them so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You typically add what you want to see. Now there's other things coming later that use Apple intelligence that aren't available just yet. So again, if we go into Apple intelligence and we explore the preview, let it load here for a second, you'll be able to rewrite some of your information based on how you want to sound in mail. We'll also have more options for communicating and more options for generating images and other things, but those are not available just yet. Those will be coming later on. So I can't wait to try those out, but those will, like I mentioned earlier, require an M1 or later. Now, as far as the overall performance, well, I've just used it for a day or so. It seems to be okay. I haven't really noticed any differences, but I was really hoping for that feature where we could actually use the phone continuity and pair that together. So again, if we go into phone, you'll see iPhone mirroring again, 
doesn't seem to work. We try and open it, it does nothing. So hopefully they activate this in beta two and it actually works. Of course, I would expect security updates. I'm not really sure how battery is in this update, but let's go ahead and go into battery. You'll see battery health. This is on an M2 Mac MacBook Air and we're at 100%. So I've just left it in optimized charging and I use it pretty regularly to take notes. So it's been pretty good for battery life, but again, this is an early beta. I wouldn't really depend on it to have great battery life or just to use it regularly. If you've found anything else in macOS Sequoia, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this new wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.